So I will invite to the stage uh, Stanislav Hilchuk. He is the Innovation Hub Technical Lead and Industry X Business Lead at Accenture. And Stanislav will share his thoughts on observations on technology trends and what a future leader would look like. So, welcome Stanislav Hilchuk and his uh, presentation, Leaders Wanted, Masters of Change at a Moment of Truth. Right. Hey, hello there. So, yeah, so a few technical things to allow me to show you something. And uh, give me a sec, I will exactly do that. And uh, someone will give me a hint that everything is visible, right? Good. Uh, so, glad to be here. Uh, sorry for not being in live with you, but uh, I'm really, really low. It's really, really great to present to you and talk to you about actually in continuation what was just shared about thoughts we are having. So how we are perceiving technology, how we are looking into that and what we should do with this. And uh, yeah, my name is Stanislav. Uh, I am here at Accenture Baltics, the Industry X Lead and Innovation Studio Lead. And this is kind of my daily, daily life to look for a new and develop for the new. And indeed, I want to talk to you about how we should shape our mindset, where we should look at, and what is ahead of us, where we are creating this thought leadership in, in, our, in our industries. And uh, it is not the, the secret that what, what happened in, in past year it rapidly accelerated everything what is what is happening right and this is impacting what we should do next and of course here the uh, the question is where are we ready will we be ready for the next thing to hit and of course there is this funny joke uh, and the, the funny question which was always posted online. So what was the reason for your digital transformation? So what was the reason for digital transformation in your company? And usually people were answering, oh, it was COVID who made us to, uh, to, to accelerate things. But the fact is indeed we faced the rapid, rapid increase, rapid digitization focus, and which, which is totally good because it creates the, the new business possibilities. It creates the demand which uh, we would be looking for, for new ways to build up on top of the digitization. And that's why, so we uh, at Accenture, uh, we are uh, creating each year the overview of where we should kind of drive our clients, where we should build our services around. And this is where we are kind of sharing the, the in information, our findings with everybody around. And this is called uh, a technology vision. And this is what we envisioned for the year uh, 2021 and the following ones as the focus things where we should go. And the main thing for us is we need a leaders. We need the people who are ready. We need the people who are thinking strategically, who are building on top what is, is existing in the market, which who are continuing to learn and are not afraid to do the technology focus, to do the uh, hands-on work, even though they might not have the background for that. It is how they are inviting everyone around them into the community and how they are delivering this service everybody, so everywhere around the world. And this is actually the, the impact from the, so total impact from the past years. And these are the things I will be talking to you about in more, more detail. And so what we, what we say in those five, uh, five trends, so it is about how we are ready, how we are thinking, how we are positioning ourselves towards the future, how we are positioning ourselves for the kind of potential risky environment. And actually that's why the, the first story is about how leaders, how the people who are in the key decision-making position should think. 
And this is as well a place for, for everybody around to help them with that. And uh, so we saw that the impact from the, from the COVID time is that someone was not ready, but someone was ready for the change and was easily adopting. And this is the thinking uh, kind of in the back of that. So think strategically. So think for the future. So act in reality, think for the future. Think of how our kind of future of kind of transportation will work, how future of uh, kind of services will work, how future of manufacturing will work, how future of the uh, customer interaction will work and start thinking into, in, in that perspective in order to transform what, what kind of people are doing now, what people are doing in their kind of day-to-day -day life, in the day-to-day -day architectures of technology landscape, in the way of doing the business, what technologies they are involved in. So what pavement they are creating in order to build it up later. So what should I do today not to fail tomorrow? What should I do today to accelerate tomorrow? And uh, so as the, the funny example, so there was a story about the US state government and, and the, the work on the COBOL. So those who you don't know what COBOL is, it's the you know, ancient, uh, not ancient, but yeah, so quite some time ago, programming language was which was developed in the 1960s and some kind of systems they still were in the uh, in, in in their kind of asian archaic ways and so they were not ready to the change and the people were not kind of acting early enough in order to prepare for a change and when the kind of natural aging of the programmers happened, they were not ready to uh, for a new systems, so they faced the staff shortage. And this is just, just for the result that no transformation of the technical landscape happened. So no pavement was done, no kind of roadmap for transformation was done. And this uh, unintentionally built an area where People were hard to get rid of these systems because they were in core, no transformation was done. Sad story, right? On the contrary, for example, so we do know what is uh, happening in the oil, oil and gas area where the, the companies uh, who were before on the oil and gas sector, now they are pivoting into the energy of the future. So they are looking into the wind, they are looking into the solar. And this is the way of thinking, how they will be operating in the future. So how well they will make the technologies and uh, to optimize what they are doing, how they can get to the net zero uh, emission company by so 2050, for example. And this is the way of thinking, way of thinking how they change their business. And this is must be you know, always in the back of the thought. So if everything is good now, think of what you should do so everything will be good tomorrow. And so other example is the uh, kind of digitization of the uh, experience for the, for the customers. So for example, the clothes manufacturing of the future. So you can go to the Ralph Lauren's website and do the order your own jacket, which will be then produced by them in the, one of their factories with your design, with your measurements. And this is the, and the, the way how to interact in the future. And the and leadership at, at, at the Ralph Lauren, they made it possible. And this is the exact thing what people are looking for. So I want what is tailored for me, I want the quality, I want the best service. And this is what they made happen. And that's why they continue to be in the game. And this is exactly what should be we thinking about. So how might we be on the edge? But this is about how we must think as, a, as the leaders, as those who are planning the, the work for the future. 
Now to the more to kind of technology domain. So where we should look at. And uh, so everything what is around us actually generates tons of data, or we actually can collect that data uh, for our use. And when we collect the data, we are able to create a digital twins of the, of the space. And this gives us ability to work with that, to provide the services in that, understand the, the object, what we are looking for. I don't know. So the example of the kind of digital twin of the whole city, where we can monitor and predict the traffic, where we can control the whole traffic, what is happening there in, in, in the city. And there are solutions which are making the and training the AI to, to work with the kind of transportation questions in the in the city environment by training in the virtual and digital twins well. And so this is a exact area where everyone is building on top of the advantages of the past years. So AI, uh, IoT, so all the digital threads and the cloud technologies, they are enabling to put all these things together and make the AI agents to analyze what is happening there in order to uh, predict the future behavior of the model predict the and simulate how things might go or how to introduce the changes into the thing. Like um, some, some factories, so turning into the digital domain, so digital factory, where at every given moment of time, we can know where the product is, uh, where the uh, goods are in terms of warehouse. So we can say where and each and everything is kind of at the real time of moment where people are. So safe safety tracking as well. And this kind of digital twins enabled by the data from the ground gives the advantage of the control, predictability and uh, kind of operational support. And so others are getting into the virtual kind of digital twins to, to train their AI agents. So we do know about, uh, so some obvious examples like the uh, autonomous cars. So of course they are uh, at the end trained in the real roads, but the first trainings are happening in the virtual and in virtual, they are getting their most of the skills from and creating this virtual space to, to analyze, to train, saves the time, saves the money, saves the energy. And this is where uh, where we should go with defining, with the planning for the future services. So train your robot in the virtual, make it work in the real. And this is the kind of real concept. So create a synthetic data to train your, your AI agents and, and bring it there. So this is how it works. Everything generates data and you can work with that data be a kind of digital twin of patient. You can have a sports athlete with their performance data in, in the historical kind of time spectrum data, analyzed, predicted, where each and every small change in the diet, behavior, uh, training routine can immediately show up the prediction of how they might uh, perform. So all of that as well is based on the data, data in the brought to the cloud, but not just visualization, but advanced kind of graph-based analytics. And it is, it is one third. Jumping in a bit forward. So we, as a people who are in that uh, model of the future work, so what should we do? What, wh where should we be? And what we see is democratizing of the technology. So if in the, kind of in the past, we were not able to program ourselves, we were not able to perform a certain things or certain kind of AI model training was requiring quite a long time. And this is coming uh, to change. So there are a lot of models available. Their natural language processing models are available. The chatbots and bots are easily adoptable and available for 
for everyone to use. And what else is coming to the kind of demo in, in this spectrum of democratizing the technologies? So everybody can do the techie work. Of course, it's a question of the depth, but it is there. So no one, uh, so there is not, uh, it's not an excuse anymore to say, oh, I don't know the technologies. I don't know how to build an app. I don't know how to um, make a simple kind of AI uh, computer vision based uh, uh, predictions it's because it's there. The tools are there. It is available. So, and I'm talking about the low codes in the cloud. So go to the cloud, like with the uh, Amazon's Honeycomb or power-ups of the Microsoft and, and build your stuff. Just, just do that. Or there are simple kind of platforms which are available to do this. So like, like Mendix. So just go and, and do it, build it up, build it yourself. Innovate on top of that, innovate with ability to create those solutions. And this is what technology realm is, is, is bringing to you. Just go and use. And the same goes with uh, uh, extended reality solutions, mobile apps. So it, it, is, it is all there. Just come with your idea and implement it. And uh, right. And as well, this is what's what happening in, uh, in, in the realm of the virtual assistants or, uh, or the, the realm of the, you know, this low code and ability for each and everyone in the enterprise to build their solutions. And uh, so for example, here, the, the big uh, pharma company, what they do, they are automating their internal processes with the you know, uh, technology abilities given to their own. And they are kind of doing that as a part of this digitization journey. So then if we look about what else is happening, so what, then we are talking about the, that everything should be available from everywhere. And we, we saw that with the remote, right? Remote working and uh, so we're bringing our own environment our own things to work, uh, to, to the work. We're bringing our own um, kind of outside the comfort of our living and comfort of our kind of daily routine and change in the way how we work. So it's not anymore now nine to five. It is the any way what makes you productive, what makes you effective. And this is where the, the change is happening. So the work is on the go. The work is happening on the move. And uh, you can do the uh, solutions for, for workers to be remote, to be present throughout other people's eyes who are kind of wearing the, the goggles with the, with the cameras. So to do inspections, to do the hands-on work, so having people with the less skills and having their uh, assistant on the kind of in, in their eyes and in their ears to guide them into how they do the, the actual kind of hands-on work. And this is what is happening all across the globe, both with the, in the energy sector or with the uh, kind of physical work uh, in, the, in the maintenance or even kind of solutions which are helping uh, in, in the medicine. So you can do your uh, physiotherapy at home. There's no need to, to go to the physiotherapist. You can do the stuff in front of your uh, device, in front of your uh, computer. And this is the uh, kind of abilities of technologies with the, with the edge, with the cloud, with the analytics available there. So just, just do the, the work. And this is the telemedicine aspect, which is quite, quite booming at the moment, both in, in the terms of kind of consulting, uh, symptoms check, all of what information being collected, and of course, 
Some are saying that the future of medicine is that each and every person at, at their home will have a, some small analytics lab or the kind of pharmaceutical lab, which will analyze their vitals. And this is where we are getting with the all of remote, with ability to have everything and, and anywhere, right? And uh, the, the other thing is, so everybody talks about the stuff with uh, involvement of the 5G remoting surgery, robotic surgery, where the, uh, the, uh, the doctor, the surgeon is in the one uh, side of the world and the, and the patient is on the other side. And here, what we have is exact the ability of doing the things from anywhere and everywhere. And the experiences and the businesses should be should be bought, uh, kind of bought, brought around that. And uh, and the last thing is actually the way of thinking of uh, getting from this individualist approach, closed systems approach, monolithic systems approach, where we are looking only into the kind of how we build our thing and protecting from everyone, not allowing from everyone. And what was uh, good mentioned as well, collaborate, find the ways to collaborate, how, find the ways to work with people. And this is kind of in the core of the, how we are partnering, how former rivals or former competitors are creating the businesses together to, get into the kind of higher market reach. So those who was, uh, were just doing the one type of service, they are inviting other ones to join them in the, in the delivery, in, in the products to, to push it more complementary to their users. And it's not only about the, the services, it is about the collaboration on all of the different levels. So like uh, in Singapore, Actually, every, uh, each and every kind of digital health uh, realm partner were connected. And the people now are in charge of their uh, kind of digital health passport. And this is, was only possible because it was brought in by, by the technologies and collaboration. Of course, the, the blockchain was involved and the, every, kind of, the information is stored in the safe and secured way. And if, if I'm mentioning the Bitcoins, of course, uh, as, as a thing which is happening on the, on the blockchain realm, the, a lot of the uh, central banks in the world are exploring how might they create the digital currencies. And this is what is, is happening, for example, in the, in the uh, Scandinavia. So, uh, what they do is they are creating their uh, e-corona systems. Of course, some might argue that it goes uh, in the bit of contradiction with uh, what is in the core of the Bitcoin about digitalization. But still, if we are thinking about how we are bringing everybody to participate in digital realm, in digital realm of uh, blockchain technologies is the way to think how to connect, how to integrate. And yeah, getting away from the, this monolithic approach. Or mm, there is one a good, good example as well, how to work on that with the, within the supply chain. And here, bring all your partners all together, create a transparency for, uh, for end users. And here in Bev is the uh, beverages company, so beer company. What they do is they are able to trace what happened with the ingredients throughout the whole way from the moment those, those were produced up until the moment they are in can. And people can see that and it creates the transparency. And it is about how everybody is involved in that transparency process, how everybody is connected, how everybody is getting into that 
mode of we are able to share. So that's why um, we are talking about how we are thinking about what is happening all around us. So when the change is coming, just know that you must be prepared. If you feel that you are not ready, just do that and ad get advanced. Don't be afraid. And as, as, what mentioned, as was mentioned already to you, that don't be afraid to go beyond what is happening in your local thing. So innovate, build up, don't be afraid, and make the things great for the future. So thank you here. That's, that's all from my side.